Okay, we're joined today by Carl Peterson. Hi, Carl. Hi. Nice to be here, and uh, thanks for Tennis Ireland for inviting me to do this interview. Uh, Carl Peterson, I'm a physiotherapist and a fitness coach from Vancouver, Canada. I spend part of my life traveling on the WTA and the ATP Tour, and the rest of my life I spend working with junior players and other athletes and other clients in my physio clinics in Vancouver. What I want to talk to you today about is, as a coach, the importance of dynamic warm-up before your athletes step on court with you. It's up to you, as a coach, to remind your clients and your players how important it is to arrive early so that they're ready to optimize the time they need to spend on court with you. In climates like Vancouver, we often have a lot of rain. Our time on court, especially on indoor courts, is very limited. So as a player, you need to optimize your time on court. And as a coach, it's up to you to make sure that the athletes are optimizing their time by arriving properly warmed up, ready to go, and take on the demands that you want on court. As a coach, you should counsel your athletes to arrive a minimum of 15 to 20 minutes earlier. They should go through the anatomy of a high-performance warm-up, which includes some aerobic activities. It includes some dynamic balance activities. It includes warming up not only the lower core, but the upper core as well, and then doing some central nervous system warm-up to get them ready for the on-court activities that they're going to need to do. Obviously, not all athletes have the time to get there as quickly as you might want them to do, but they need to optimize their warm-up by doing arm swings, leg swings, doing some aerobic activities that involve crossover drills, side shuffle drills, and things that mimic tennis movements. As well, if they have the opportunity to use some of the stretch bands, they can do some of the posterior cuff training and different I's, A's, T's, and W exercises, which will ensure that their upper core is ready for the forces that they need to do as they are either decelerating a forehand or decelerating a serve, which in the modern game is 30% of the tennis strokes. After they finish their on-court session or on-court lesson, they need to go and do some form of recovery workout. That recovery workout helps to rid the body's uh, muscle systems and uh, blood systems of lactic acid. It helps to cool the athlete or cool the player down. At the same time, they need to ensure that they are rehydrating with the proper amount of water or other kinds of uh, sort of liquid nutrition. They need to make sure that they're refueling with between 50 and 70 grams of carbohydrate. After that, they need to make sure that they're doing some exercises to regain some of their flexibility or muscle length. They also need to release some of the pressure on the muscle tissues by either doing some rolling on a ball or rolling on a, a foam roll or some other ac activity. The other things that are very important is that they reconnect the core by doing some form of core training exercises. It could be as simple as doing some supine bridging drills, it could be as simple as doing some alternating lunges where they're switching on their core muscles and making sure that they're activated. And the other thing that's really important is that the athletes are utilizing some kinds of recovery methods like reinvigorating with a recovery menu. Hot cold um, sauna and whirlpool, hot cold showers, anything that they have available to them at home or in the fitness center or the club that they belong to will help them to recover quicker and help them to optimize their ability to train for the next session that day or train for the next day. Carl, thanks very much for your time. We appreciate that and we hope to see you back in Ireland very soon. Thank you. I appreciate it and uh, good luck with all your players and I hope to see you soon in Dublin or elsewhere in Ireland.